ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our special report of Saturday evening. Today, we're going to present you the Red Bull's company in the globalization process. Indeed, in the breaking news of this week, industries and manufacturing of Red Bull celebrated a record of 50 billion cans produced all over the world since the beginning of the brand. To better understand these events, let us review the different historic stages of the company. So, Red Bull was founded in 1987 by Dietrich Mastetich in Austria. Then it has quickly become the leading global provider of energy drinks. In 1992, it started to conquer the Hungarian market, and in 1994, it was present all over the European countries with, which accepted the brands. So, and uh, finally, to the last uh, thing we can notice is that in 2012, uh, the brand was present in 165 countries with 5.2 billion cans sold. So uh, nowadays, uh, the facilities are in Austria, the world headquarters of the brand, in Switzerland and in the US. Moreover, the product is distributed through a network of third-party distributors, along with a subsidiary Red Bull distribution company. Therefore, Red Bull is present in the globalization process. But what is globalization? In geographic terms, ge globalization means gen generalized interactions into the va generalized interaction between the various parts of the humanity. The world is most closely associated with the term economic globalization which means uh, the expansion of uh, many businesses into markets throughout the world. However, globalization describes also process by which regional activities, societies or cultures have become integrated through a global network thanks to communication, transport and trade. This is the definition of globalization. So, how Red Bull takes part in the globalization process? In order to answer to this problematic, we are going to present you uh, the different aspects of the topic. First, Thibault will explain how Red Bull behaves to spread his products and takes part in to the world exchanges. And finally, I will reveal the dangers of Red Bull's globalization. So, uh, I'm going to uh, speak about the spread of Red Bull's products and the place of Red Bull on the international market. So, uh, we have already seen that the Red Bull scan have been spreading worldwide in a very short time lapse. So, uh, to understand the, um, the brand strategy concerning marketing, I think we have to consider uh, a quote of the, fund of the boss of Red Bull, which is, we don't bring the product so we, sorry, we don't bring the product to the consumer, we bring consumer to the product. And the way to bring the product to the consumer is a massive advertising program in which sponsoring is holding a strong place. So now I will speak about the sponsoring of Red Bull, which is a, a huge part of the brand. So I think we have to consider some numbers. So the sponsoring is a 20% of the benefits of the brand and uh, it represents approximately two billions of dollars. So uh, the brand is present in uh, lots of manifestation uh, of extreme sport or music and for the sport it can be uh, Formula One, beach jump, free skiing, mountain bike, etc. So uh, for example in France, Red Bull um, is sponsoring a soapbox race in the South Korea. So uh, Red Bull has a mundial strategy but uh, it has a local implication and uh, during the manifestations, the cans of the Red Bull are omnipresent and the manifestations are over-mediatized and so on all the pictures or all, all the commentary, there is a Red Bull logo or the, where the brand is present. So um, any other brands offer such advertising and it's very massive. And Red Bull goes further uh, to create its own manifestation uh, so uh, we can notice the jump of Felix Bockmarter here. We can uh, also notice the 
Red Bull Hair Race, which is a very famous race uh, in the world. And um, this race is, uh, ex is uh, with extreme plane and it's followed by thousands and thousands and uh, maybe millions of telespectators, uh, especially in the USA, in the world. So, in, in addition, Red Bull has also a massive um, advertising program and uh, has invested a lot on TV. So uh, all the advertising are very pleasant and simple, with animals or stereotype of stereotype of the life. And in the end of the advertise of the ad advertising, the slogan is always the same: Red Bull give you wings. So the brand has created a Red Bull culture, which tends to spread worldwide, and that is a proof that Red Bull is taking part in the globalization process. So now I think we have to consider the domination of Red Bull in the energy drink. So Red Bull is at 43% uh, uh, of the global market, uh, just, in, uh, just uh, in front of Monster, which is at 39. So it doesn't seem to be a lot, but it's, uh, in terms of benefits and of dollar, it's a lot. So uh, Red Bull is a very controlled uh, brand, and uh, the employees have a shot of discretion. And there were only uh, 9,000 9, in 2012. And the head staff is only composed of 200 people. So it's nothing compared to the benefits of the world. So Red Bull has a very uh, strong um, policy and there is no, uh, not as much liberty as in other brands. And so maybe that is a, um, maybe this is a, a cause of the, of the leadership of Red Bull. So um, we have to notice that also that uh, Red Bull uh, had created its, its own market of energy drink because they were known before 1987. So uh, now we have, uh, I think we have to speak about the environmental question because uh, for all these big brands of uh, very immediate produced, the environmental question is very present because uh, it's in the it's an uh, actual question. And so on its website, Red Bull is consecrating a huge part of the environmental problem and it is, and, uh, it is taking careful about its image. So Red Bull has made conscious decision about the using of aluminium and so the, the cans uh, weigh 60% uh, less than before and they are 100% uh, recyclable. So, uh, all the cans can be collected, and so Red Bull is uh, putting uh, in the putting in the light all the small efforts the brand is making to uh, reduce the f uh, carbon footprint. So the recycling loop of the can is part of globalization because it's mobilizing several actors in the network industrial. So we can notice, I think, the especially uh, network of Red Bull, which is a world core strategy. Because we can see here that the, all the this is weak. so we, we could see that all the cans are um, recy uh, recycled with a world world strategy. So all the factories, so factories which is recycling, and the factories which is making the Red Bull's cans are closed. So there is no um, the use of trucks or for uh, for oil is only uh, on a rolling carpet. So it's a so it's an um, it's a gain in energy. So to sum up, the company has a, a very good marketing politics in the world, and uh, it makes the can known everywhere. There is a internet connection. I think you can say that. And uh, to promote their products, the company invests a lot in sponsoring, marketing, and advertising. However, Red Bull begin to be criticized by different developed countries, mainly in Europe, uh, which make science scientific reports that mention the dark side of Red Bull scam. Yes, so after this presentation, we can think that, uh, that the Red Bull seems to be safe for the planet and uh, not dangerous for the Earth, isn't it? However, is it really the truth? Can we believe in all these affirmations made by the own company? Indeed, nobody can check. Therefore, at last, 
Red Bull's actions aren't very well known besides its reports. So, behind the idyllic vision made by Red Bull's marketing, I will present to you the dark side of the company in the globalization process. First, let's start briefly with some facts. As you already know, at the start, the sale of Red Bull's cans was forbidden in Europe and in modern countries like uh, Denmark and France. So, since the beginning, Red Bull's products were not very well considered because uh, nobody knows the impact on, on the, of the product on the earth. Indeed, the different consequences of some ingredients, for example taurine, are not well known and remain uncertain. Here are the main ingredients of uh, a Red Bull can. So you can see that uh, taurine and, uh, and the caffeine contents are very high but uh, not illegal. So drinking just one can isn't really dangerous. Uh, however, drinking uh, several cans uh, can cause health problems. Indeed, some suspicious deaths after drinking several cans were found in various countries. For example, three teenagers from Canada died after drinking several Red Bull cans. In spite of that, the company is still describing that moderate consumption isn't toxic and its product is completely safe. It is true that isolated ingredients which compose the can aren't dangerous in theory, but a mixture of all of them in the same energy drink is potentially dangerous for the health. Moreover, young people during party often make a mixture between energy drink and alcohol. And uh, this mixture is potentially, is potentially dangerous for the health, Say, uh, according to scientific reports. Then, because of the popularity of the product among young people, Red Bull scams are today consumed everywhere in the world. Therefore, if the product is really dangerous, millions of people are in danger. Indeed, 160 cans of Red Bulls are drunk every second in the world. So, in addition to have a potential negative effect, impact on us, Red Bull's company participates to the global warming an international problem. Behind the recurring reports uh, of Red Bulls concerning its low impact on the environment, something else is hidden. Indeed, Red Bull's cans are composed with aluminium. However, extraction of this metal is very polluting. Thus, massive can production pollutes a lot, even if, uh, they can, if uh, the cans can be recycling them. Moreover, cans production la consumes. Sorry. Moreover, cans production consume large amounts of drinking water, approximately 100 liters per can. It's huge. In addition, Red Bull's cans, Red Bull's cans are produced in poor countries where there are just a few constraints to produce cheaply what they want in contempt of the environment. Finally, cans exportation leads to carbon emission. So, to conclude, Red Bull's production take part of globalization. First, because of their impacts on the health of people everywhere in the world, and second, because of their impacts on the environment by pollution and resource depletion. Red Bull's activities concern the whole planet. So, we see that Red Bull is present um, all over the world nowadays and it is in a Western society and it tends to spread all over the world. So, but we have to notice that Red Bull is a paradox. It is selling energy drinks where, whereas it is always doing with sport. It is supporting sports and partying 
but the sectors are um, in a, but Red Bull is uh, doing polemic in the sectors. Uh, it has a mondial strategy but a local implication and uh, it is advocating freedom but all of its activities are over control. So because of its important place in the international exchanges, because of these successes among young people everywhere in the world, and finally because of the impacts of the global environment, Red Bull Company is to be an actor of globalization. However, by purchasing Red Bull's products, we encourage the production. Therefore, we are indirectly res responsible of the negative effects on the earth and, and the environment. This is the end of our report, and see you on Monday. Thanks for watching BBC World News.